Uh, I'm sorry uh, about all the chaos that there's been this morning. I've had all kinds of uh, technical difficulties, which have actually all been down to my own uh, fault. But celebrating 12 years of reading the Bible and reading especially the last three years, what a blessing uh, that's been. And we've got another special guest, my great friend uh, and Australian, <laughs> Glenn Scrivener. Hello Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, my name is Glenn Scrivener. If we haven't met before, I am Ruby and JJ's dad. I am Emma's husband. I am Australian and live on the south coast of England. And I'm just thrilled that you guys are doing reading the Bible together and have been doing it for over a decade now. Just reading through the scriptures and seeing how Christ is at the center of them all. And I thought that today we could have a look at the biggest book of the Bible and show how Jesus is at the heart of the Psalms. So let's have a look at Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Now quite often people come to the Bible not looking to find Jesus and to find life in Christ in the name of Jesus in the scriptures. So often people come to the scriptures just to get life advice, just in a really general sense. They think that the Bible just speaks of some vague spiritual truths that spiritual people can apply to their spiritual lives. Actually, the Bible is testifying to Jesus on every page. And when we read the scriptures like that, they come alive. You see, if you come to Psalms and you think that this is just giving you generic spiritual advice for how to be a spiritual person, then you'll think that Psalm 1 is about a comparison between righteous kinds of folk and unrighteous kinds of folk. Uh, but nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, if you read a decent translation of the Bible, it will pick up on what's there in the original language of the Old Testament, of the, the Hebrew. There, it contrasts that blessed is the man with the wicked ones. So there is one righteous man. There is one blessed man. Blessed is a word that just means happy, full of the life of God, happy. There's one of those, and there's a whole multitude of wicked sinners, okay? Blessed is the man, and that phrase, the man, in all sorts of languages, the man means a ruler. So you might, you might think of, you know, the man is oppressing me. You know, the, the, there are parts of the world where you would talk about being downtrodden because the man is oppressing me. Or my wife's from Northern Ireland. I remember the first time I met her dad. Um, he said to me on the first day we met, he said, your man is quite conservative. And I had no idea what he meant. Your man, your man is quite conservative. And it took me, it took me like six hours to figure out, oh, he meant the prime minister. He meant the Australian prime minister is quite conservative, but he didn't say the Australian prime minister. He said, your man, your man, okay? Because the man in English and in Hebrew refers to a ruler. And here we've got this, this kingly person who's verse two, his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's what the king was meant to do. He was meant to meditate on the law day and night. Deuteronomy told the king to do that. Joshua 1 told the king, the righteous ruler, to do that. So this is not a case of blessed are righteous sorts of people who read their Bible lots, although that's true. But first and foremost, this is saying there is one individual who soaks himself in the scripture and he is uniquely a tree of life. That's what verse 3 says. He's like a tree of life. So this righteous indiv individual is a tree of life. But over here, there are a whole bunch of people, verse 4, who are like chaff because they're disconnected from the tree of life, disconnected from this righteous individual. And they are just ephemeral. They're just blown away in the wind. But then by the end of the psalm, you get, but there are some people who are called righteous. There are multitudes who can be called righteous and not wicked. How do they get grafted in? 
to this tree of life? Well, Psalm 2 gives us the answer to that question. Psalm 2, why do the nations conspire and the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against two people, against the Lord and against his anointed one. You could say against his Messiah, against his Christ. Okay, so people are disconnected and rebellious against the Lord and his Christ. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters, verse 3. Verse 4, the one enthroned in heaven is not intimidated. He laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king, the man, the blessed one, the righteous ruler. I've installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. And then we hear the words of the blessed man, the righteous ruler, the Messiah. Verse 7, he says, I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son, today I've become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. So the righteous ruler is also the Messiah. He's also the son, the son of the father. And as the son, he will inherit. What will he inherit? The nations. Therefore, verse 10, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and you be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And here is the answer to that question. How do we get connected to the tree of life and find life for ourselves? Well, Psalm 1 verse 1, blessed is the man. Psalm 2, verse 12, and blessed are all who take refuge in him. Right there is the message at the heart of the Bible. Blessed is the man. Blessed is Christ. He is full of the life of God. Blessed is Christ and blessed are all those who take refuge in him. You could summarize the whole Bible in those two sayings. Blessed is the man and blessed are all who take refuge in him. And as you come to Christ, you're grafted into the tree of life. You find the nourishment of the sap of the Spirit. You meditate on the Lord day and night just the way the Christ does. He brings you into his kind of scripture-filled, blessed life. And now, with Psalms 1 and 2 under our belt, now that we've taken refuge in the Son, now we can read the rest of the Psalms. Don't just race into the Psalms and think that you can pick up any old Psalm and sing it yourself, okay? You know, if you go to the Sydney Opera House, they don't like it if you join in. That's kind of frowned on. Um, You can't just pick up God's songbook, the Psalms, and sing them yourself. No, no, no. You've got to come in through the front door. And the way you come in through the front door is through Psalms 1 and 2 to figure out who is the one who can sing the songs of God, And then you come to him and you let him tune your heart to sing God's praise. That's what the old theologian John Calvin said. Meditating on Psalm 22, verse 22, he said, Christ is our heavenly choir master who tunes our hearts to sing God's praise. Really, what we've got with the Psalms is here is Christ's prayer journal. He is the blessed one meditating on the scriptures. He is praying before God and Before him, there are two groups of people. There are the wicked who oppose him, and there are the righteous who take refuge in him. Okay, And the Psalms are largely the righteous one, the Messiah, Christ, praying before the Father about the righteous and the wicked. Or sometimes the Psalms are the righteous ones calling out to God, saying, shelter us in the Christ because the wicked are after us. Or sometimes it's just a conversation between the father and the son. But usually it's those four characters who are having an interplay in these, in these psalms. So you've got God, the father, the Lord. You've got his Christ, his son, the blessed ruler, the king. You've got the wicked who oppose him. And you've got the righteous who take refuge in him. And as you're reading the Psalms, it might be a good exercise to have a look over the Psalms and figure out, ah, is this... Is this the prayer of the righteous king who is saying, deliver me from the wicked? Or is this the prayer of uh, the righteous ones who are taking refuge in the son? Or is this the father talking to the son? How are these four particular characters playing together in the Psalms? And I think you'll see that each one 
is a different facet to the life of God. And you'll see that Christ comes at the heart of your scripture reading. Well, that's all we've got time for this morning as we've uh, had a look at those Psalms. But I, I hope that this gives you the bug for, for continuing on reading through the Psalms, reading on through the whole scriptures. You guys are doing brilliantly. I, I celebrate you. I celebrate uh, the fact that you guys have been doing this. And uh, I trust that you have become in Christ like that tree of life, that you've meditated on the law and that it has grown you up into the true blessed life that is ours in Christ. Thank you and God bless.